Yeah, that that brings up a, a question that I had, but also some of our audience members had yeah. is is what and in, not necessarily just recovery, but just in your writing, your comedy writing um, and directing. Um, are there outside influences, you know, beyond beyond comedians or films that have influenced your work? You know, does does your background in international relations play mm, any part mm-hmm. in in things you care to tell stories about? Hmm. I'm not keyed enough, keyed in enough on the film world to feel like these directors are my like my people. These are <laughs> these are the ones that I can like turn to and be like, what would what would Paul Thomas Anderson do? <laughs> and I don't necessarily feel that kind of like um, energy with anybody's work. I feel like, um, and maybe this is just still one foot in the sketch comedy world but with sketch comedy you can visit anywhere for like these brief snatches of time so you've got one of the favorite sketches i ever did was um playing a roman emperor kind of thing where we we were laughing at somebody who kept like missing swings from a from like a batting cage kind of situation um and and so like i i loved the energy of just being able to like shout the classic phrase bread and circuses and and having that um be applied to such a like mundane silly thing but it like allowed us to like we were all in like this really epic <laughs> roman garb and and um and um just a crowd of people shouting at this one person who can't hit a baseball. Um, but like that feeling of, of being able to step into a world or step into a character um, gives you, gives you just like a, a little glimpse, a little um, snatch of just, just anything, whether it's the, the period, the, the person. Um, so, Having one foot in the sketch comedy world, I feel like nothing feels like off limits in terms of where you can go, what you can take influence from. Mm. We've done noir sketches. We've done very like Liam Neeson action film sketches. We've we've done just the whole gamut, and and yeah. so um, when it comes to stories that I want to actually tell. I feel like you can tell them through so many different forms, through so many different um, iterations, whether it was like an actual, like, we're going to go to ancient Mesopotamia and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, or, or you're going to um, go specifically into I'm trying to think of a good example. There, there's, um, the stories that I feel most attached to right now are honestly uh, more family oriented because I've got three little boys. They're, they're like my 24 seven um, life and job. And mm-hmm. so the um, seeing the things that they really are excited about um, thinking about making things that they would be really excited about telling stories mm-hmm. that are related to um father son dynamics um things like that are all very interesting to me um mm. right now and and um yeah i don't I, I guess i don't know what the next story is going to be but i feel like it's going to partake of those elements of 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 um have it trying to form close family bonds trying to um take care of people because anywhere in the whole slew of history you've got people try, trying to take care of other people and um and especially in a world that feels like it's disintegrating in so many different ways like it it um trying to create some lightness and levity feels like it's what i've been able to do for so long it's something that i feel very confident in in being able to continue to do 
and as much as I love There Will Be Blood, I probably am not going to make any There Will Be Blood films because it doesn't feel like it's it's um, in me, I guess. It's, mm -hmm. it's not um, my my um story or my message that i want to give out to people hmm. how so you were mentioning that they that they right now that's kind of where you're drawing i guess in a cliche way to say it drawing your inspiration from mm. is your experience with with your sons um is that is there something in in the works or that you would like to do mm -hmm. coming from that area of your life um there are two very specific projects that I like think about that I'm not even sure what the path to making them even looks like. Mm -hmm. One of them is actually a sci-fi film about cloning <laughs> that, that would involve... Oh, I'm going to get emotional. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not even a real story yet. I haven't even like read it or anything but <laughs> i'm really sorry no it's okay maybe because i haven't really like talked about it with anybody before mm. so i haven't it feels like um <laughs> yeah really personal i can't i can't i can't get it out i'm sorry um yeah. let me let me just like <laughs> I'm laughing so much too. No, Just trying it's to good. like break the break out of the emotion for some reason. Um, um, the movie that I would be most interested in making is actually. I feel like you can't like cut from me like not crying to like something crying for no reason. Good. <laughs> Drow is an amazing editor. Oh, he's really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joe's so good. Joe's so good. I could so good. Make anything happen. Yeah. 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 Do I look, I mean, do I look remotely composed right now? I don't. Look at me, look at me. You look great. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're fine. Um, uh, a movie that I love watching with my boys, um, Paddington. Mm. Paddington 2. Those connect so well to me because it it feels like I mean Paul King having directed The Mighty Boosh, which is a very sketchy kind of sitcom. Um, I feel like would just be that's like he's already filling the niche that I want to fill. Like he he's like making um such wonderful comedic um stories that are more family oriented, um with a beloved children's character um so there's a there's a movie called oh what is it called it's like the snowman i think it's just very simply called the snowman okay have you seen this it's like this british animated film that's like done in colored pencil from like 40 years ago or something yeah yeah i think i remember it has this amazing about. song in it that's like one of the best songs i've ever heard okay walking on the air um walking in the air um anyway i was like if we could make the snowman paddington style that would just be the best thing <laughs> like that that's that's one of the projects that. that i really want to yeah, do that sounds <laughs> really wholesome yeah yeah <laughs> really great <laughs> um the other one is yeah sci-fi cloning a lost child so mm. that that's as far as i can probably talk about it without getting too like worked up i guess okay but, yeah i'm excited yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i'll keep a watch out for cool those. who knows yeah. they, they they are maybe like a decade down the line because i don't even know what the path looks like to get funding to make anything like either of these movies i assume mm. the snowman and paddington any sort of like parallel would be like, I don't even know what the VFX budget for Paddington is. And right. how do you even, like, tackle that without a major studio behind it? It's yeah. just, like, the sci-fi one might, might be a little more more manageable. So I'll let you know who'd when the script that, is finished. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> who would have thought a sci-fi would be more manageable than... Right. <laughs> right. I guess it would be because it would yeah. be more in the line of, like, her or, um, I mean, right. Deus Ex had or Ex Machina. 
Ex Machina had um, more, um, definitely had a lot of VFX in it, but yeah, but that that energy, that like small cast, um, futuristic world um, kind of feel. Mm. 